hard to find ways to diversify our police force so that it more closely reflects the communities it serves. We've begun offering hiring bonuses and recruitment incentives in order to fill vacancies, and I'm proud to say that our current recruit class is not only the largest class we've had in recent years, it's also the most diverse. We're actively putting efforts forward to improve and expand our training space so that we can continue to accommodate these larger recruitment classes. And I'm pleased to share that in the budget I will present to the County Council in the coming weeks, we will be making even more strategic investments in public safety. The proposed budget will include funding for critical positions that go to the heart of how we treat our officers and how they interact with our communities. We will create a wellness director position in the police department because the health and wellness of our officers is critically important to ensure that they can continue to do their jobs to the best of their abilities. We will also seek to identify an individual to oversee our police community engagement efforts, serving as a direct liaison to our communities and ensuring that all of our precincts are making the connections that are so vital to effective community policing efforts. In addition, our budget proposes to hire eight new data scientists, an investment that demonstrates the depth of our commitment to using data to drive our policing strategies. These individuals will fully understand the trends happening in our communities and go deeper to help us pinpoint exactly where to target our resources for the most effective, accountable policing possible. We're proposing to add seven new positions in our forensic section to enhance our ability to solve cases quickly. The faster we can solve crimes, the faster we get criminals off the street. These positions will not only help in solving crimes, but will likewise help in the prosecution for gun-related crimes. Safety in our schools remains a top priority for all of us. To support our existing school resource officers, we plan to hire four new floating SROs, enhancing our ability to develop relationships in the schools and respond to any criminal activity that occurs. And finally, like police departments across the country, we're working hard to recruit new talent and ensure a fully staffed police force. In the coming fiscal year, in addition to efforts to further improve our training spaces, our budget will help fund continued hiring bonuses and recruitment incentives to continue to help us attract a diverse pool of candidates who want to make a difference in their communities. As I'm sure the Chief will remind you, we are hiring, if anyone is interested. All of these investments will make our already excellent police department even stronger. They will go a long way towards supporting our officers and keeping our neighborhoods safe and I want our residents to know that these investments in our, the police department are investments in their communities. <clears throat> they are investments in a vibrant Baltimore County. And they will be joined by additional upstream investments to holistically ensure that vibrancy. At this point, I'm happy to turn things over to Chief Hyatt for a few words, and then we're happy to take any questions. Good morning. First, I would like to thank you, County Executive Bolshevsky and the administration for your continued support and investment in the Baltimore County Police Department. In order for our department to be truly effective, it is crucial for us to have the support of and the partnership with our elected officials, residents, and stakeholders across Baltimore County. Our commitment to public safety and the well-being of all who live, work, and visit here is and will continue to be the priority of the Baltimore County Police Department. Funding for the critical positions announced today will provide significant support for our agency, which will in turn have a positive impact on the community. These additions will boost our current efforts in crime fighting, police and community engagement, and employee wellness to further our mission in keeping Baltimore County safe. I am so proud of the work that our members are doing and the positive daily interactions that they're having with people across our communities. Those efforts, along with the extraordinary work that our detectives and forensics team are doing, are a significant factor in why our clearance rate in multiple crime categories continues to be well above the national average. These same valued relationships that help us solve crimes also contribute to our collaborative efforts on crime prevention. The addition of a liaison to coordinate our engagement efforts in communities across Baltimore County will ensure that we continue to build new relationships and enhance the existing ones. I am also extremely proud of the members that are part of our school resource officer program. 
We were one of the first major police departments across the United States to establish a school resource officer program. And since 1997, police departments across the nation have looked to our program as a national model. It is never too early to start engaging with young people in Baltimore County, and much of this work occurs daily in our schools. Expanding our school resource officer program is vital. The job of a school resource officer is much more than simply placing a police officer in a school. They work closely with staff and faculty to develop comprehensive safety plans to ensure that our schools are a safe place for students to learn. Their coaches, their teachers, mentors, role models, and sometimes mediators to the many students they serve. And the relationships that students build with our school resource officers are long lasting and effective. Many of the applicants recruited to join our police department for continuing frequently tell us when we ask the reason for joining that it was positive interactions that they had with school resource officers in their own schools that led them to consider this profession. And speaking of recruitment, I am very grateful to our employment section who continues to implement creative and innovative strategies to help us recruit and hire qualified applicants during a time when law enforcement agencies across the nation are struggling to recruit. The continuation of our employment bonus and recruitment incentives will help ensure that we continue to attract and hire the most qualified applicants to the Baltimore County Police Department. Over the last few years, we've worked closely with the administration in an effort to promote public trust and transparency, and much of that work continues with the expansion of our public-facing data dashboards. The data scientists that we hope to hire will have both data analysis and technical expertise to allow the department to spot emerging crime trends more quickly and therefore make our response more nimble. Our commitment to data-driven decision-making is a proven strategy and these resources will be critical tools to assist precinct commanders and others in the important work that they do. The role of forensics in public safety is something that is often understated and unseen. However, the work of our forensic section is crucially important and their role is absolutely essential. Supplementing this function will enhance our ability to investigate cases and then work in partnership with the state's attorney's office to prosecute. One of my top priorities since starting in my role as chief almost three years ago continues to be the well-being of our employees. We continue to introduce new programs and resources with the support of the county executive focused in this area. The addition of a wellness director will ensure that we provide the highest level of service and support to our members and their families. Good mental and psychological health is just as, is just as essential as good physical health for law enforcement officers to be effective in keeping our communities safe. Healthy and balanced police officers will continue to serve Baltimore County in the best way possible. I am so proud of the work that our members continue to do on a daily basis in Baltimore County. Working in this profession is more than just a job. It requires commitment to our mission and to those we serve. Both our sworn and professional staff members truly care about the work they do. These investments in the Baltimore County Police Department will ensure that we are able to continue to provide an exceptional level of service to each person who lives, works, and visits Baltimore County. I truly want to thank the County Executive and the County Council for their continued support of our police department. Thank you for everything that you've done to support us. We really appreciate it. And I'd also like to thank the community as well as our, our other stakeholders for their continued support. Thank you. We can get you the, the exact details and the numbers, but these, these are all additive. There are, there are no cuts. Um, and we're also looking uh, to, as we finalize the budget, if there are other places we can support as well. But it's all additive. Yeah, you're adding, how many of those are for sworn The, I believe, and Chief, you can correct me if I'm wrong, the SROs will be sworn officers and the rest will be civilians. Yes, sir. You talked about wanting the department to fully staff. What county people need to be hired to bring the rest of the I'll, I'll give that one to the Chief.
Thank you. So obviously that's a fluid number with retirements and, and continuous hires. But right now um, we're looking to hi hire somewhere over 100 officers. Um, and uh, with this class that we just put in, um, certainly that assists us with our efforts and we're going to continue to look to uh, move towards larger classes. So our county is divided into three patrol areas, and um, these efforts will make sure that we are able to boost the resources in each of those areas. Do you know the size of the recruit class that you mentioned? And do you have a handle on the demographic and how it's being recruited? We can get all that information to you. Joy will get it to you. So we can get you the exact information on that, but what we are seeing between the incentive as well as the community hiring events, uh, we are seeing more local engagement and more local interest um, and more folks that are coming out to our events, and that is absolutely helping us with our hiring. Can you explain your question a little bit better? So officer wellness, not as a higher incentive. It, it's a best practice in our profession, making sure that we're, we're taking care of our first responders that are taking care of the community. So this is one of the things that I'm really grateful to the county executive and the administration on. Um, we actually recently, at the beginning of March, just hired um, our first organizational clinician um, for the department, and um, this is through our EAP. This is somebody that will be a resource to our employees, and that's something that is, uh, again, a best practice in law enforcement. Speaking to the seven new forensic team members uh, that you saw the state team work with there, I find that really interesting. How long has that been um, you know, in the plan to add this to the team? You're going to talk about how we've had to outsource sure. numbers in my health. So some of the conversations that, that the county executive and I have been having have been in reference to the fact that with Baltimore County being a busy jurisdiction, um, us needing to make sure that we're able to utilize our resources effectively, um, part of that is us not outsourcing work. It's also about us making sure that if we have a situation that we're able to return our patrol officers back where we need them on the street in the community and that way um, these new hires can, can do the forensics role while our police officers are out on the street. So will you no longer be outsourcing at all or was this in addition to outsourcing? So this is a little bit different. Um, outsourcing is a bit more of a lab function. Um, the majority of this, this, this will have a lab component, which will definitely uh, be helpful to us, but this will also be in terms of our actual uh, tech technicians that are out on the street. Can you give a, an insight into like the specific types of crime scene tech, just lab technicians, uh, uh, ballistics, like is there uh, a particular grouping of, of titles that you'd be involved in? So there are two particular categories that we're looking at right now. Um, we're finalizing that, but one of them uh, certainly will be the forensics technicians that are out on the street processing crime scenes, and then the other piece will be an internal one. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.